Last winter, I set out on a trip across the Swiss Alps with my skis. It took 26 days, and it was one of the best experiences I've had in the mountains so far. Beautiful, clear, cold morning. Stage one started with the classic court route from Chamonix to Zermatt with my good friend Andrew. Andrew's Australian, but he's actually a pretty nice guy. Here we are, having some lunch. We had big days, often finishing in the dark. Lots of boot packing, lots of skiing, lots of glaciers, lots of high passes, and it was just a really sick way to start the trip. Just losing the sun now. I said goodbye to Andrew and I met up with my friend Pranilla. So we're just about at the saddle. Behind us it's 3,200 meters and it's completely dry, which is bad news because this is the highest point in our tour for the next few days. Luckily Pranilla is super optimistic, so we had a really good time, lots of laughing. Beautiful Simplon Pass. Yeah. When I go back Baltimore, ain't no car. And we probably look absolutely ridiculous <laughs> because it's sunny, dry city. And here we are carrying skis like plonkers. Out in green, green, rocky road. You're promenading green. I went into the Bernese Alps with Laura, a fellow Kiwi here in Switzerland. It reminds me quite a lot of New Zealand mountains, really craggy, big glaciers, and it's home to the largest glacier in Europe, Alex Gletscher. First morning here in the Bernese Alps. Today we're going to go climb Grossgrünhorn. Some of the Grünhorn. Halfway. Oh yeah. Huge mental milestone to get to here. I always thought if I could make it fourth pass, I could make it all the way through. So I just have to keep my head down. Two more weeks. Keep doing what I'm doing and enjoying it. two weeks of sunshine which was really good but it also meant now the mountains didn't have too much snow left so I started this section having to change my route. Every muscle, every joint I'm feeling right now that's for sure. At some point I just had to kind of laugh at myself like what are you doing man? <laughs> You're out here with this huge pack and tired legs and look <laughs> fucking homeless. Two more hours and I'm at the the hut, some blankets, a little shelter. There's really nothing else in the world I want more than that right now. Dialogue dangers in that 
This morning I'm heading up to this one, Rainvaldhorn. Uh, it's the highest mountain in Ticino. We don't go over it to cross into Graubund. Going over this really nice ridge, pretty cool terrain. And this, this area is super wild, especially compared to the rest of the Alps. I didn't see any tracks, I didn't see any people in the mountains, all the huts. You know, no one had been in them all winter. It was just real special to be out there by myself. Sami, I have to find the way down, but I'm skiing down the east face down here into uh, Grabu. Perfect, holy! Woo! Good cold! But I need a walk! Woo! Now I feel clean! I feel good! I'm going down to Splüge or Splügen, Splügen. Here with my main man Cyril. And Andrew's getting the fire lit. Absolutely ripping the tarmac now. I rode maybe 60 kilometers to Lenzerheide, which is where I met Hannah and some friends. Okay, I'm warm now. <laughs> we woke up in the morning to a lot of rain in town and a white out. <laughs> it's quite funny after all the high passes and the glaciers and the big mountains. And just this little crossing from Lenza Height to Arosa was probably the sketchiest part of the whole trip. And as we were touring along the valley, you could just hear these weird avalanches coming down, but you couldn't see them. Pretty uncomfortable. We came from back uh, between these mountains. <laughs> so today I crossed over the 500 kilometer mark. We've now traveled 515 kilometers, all human powered. I'm celebrating today by staying at the Igloo Dorf in Davos. I helped build one in a different part of Switzerland, but they're all through Switzerland. And the whole thing is made out of snow and ice. Davos especially has really cool artwork. So I met up with my good friend Tom and we headed into the Silverdata Mountains. This was a range I'd never been in before and I was ahead of schedule so I said hey let's just take a few more days and climb some peaks and really just try and soak in the last few days of the trip. So it's day 25-ish. Last night we stayed down below me the Silveretta Hütte and this morning we're climbing the Silveretta Horn. second summit of the day. Tom's here in Austria and I'm sitting here in Switzerland, right on the border. Go back Baltimore, you know Carly, on my floor, come along, follow me. The last section was quite bittersweet. Um, on one hand I was completing this really cool mission, but on the other hand I I didn't really want it to finish, you know, I think I could have kept going another month. So it's the last day of the Traverse. We're at Grenz Ekkopf, celebrating with the beer on the summit.
Beautiful day to finish the traverse. Big mountain vista. Looking in Switzerland. About to head into Austria. It's a ball. Uh, that ski down though, it felt really cool, you know, just knowing that I completed something. Before I came here to Switzerland, I couldn't ski. So for the last two seasons, I just got stuck into it. And this was a cool way to put all, everything I'd learned to the test. There we go, last descent down into Eshkul. It's all over. Spending so long out in the mountains is probably the best thing you can do for yourself. 